Thank you for tuning in once again. I have always appreciated the church's reflections on dying in the month of November. It's an old thought in our tradition, memento mori, remember that you will die. In a culture that works very hard at avoiding death, talking about death and planning for it, it's an annually good reminder for us. I remember one man that I knew from the parish in Fayetteville in particular, who said to me when he was first diagnosed with cancer, I want to get this dying thing right. I want to be a good example for my wife and my kids and friends. I've had a great life. Yes, I would have liked to have lived longer. He was in his mid fifties, but I can't complain about anything. It's been a gift to have lived. I've had a wonderful and happy marriage. I have great kids and I don't feel like I'm leaving any unfinished business behind. I visited him several times over the months as he continued to decline, but I will never forget the final conversation I had with him just a couple of days before he died. His children and wife were all there at the house. He had asked me to come to visit him again and anoint him again, but he wanted his family to be present for it. So we all joined together in prayer. And then as I completed, I felt that my presence was a bit intrusive and so I made to leave. He said, no father, I'd like you to remain. I have some things I'd like to say to my family and I'd like you to hear them too. You don't ignore a dying man's re request, so I stayed. And I was blown away by the experience, by his sincere and profound words that he left behind for his family. He said something to this effect. I've been married to your mother for 30 years. I've always been faithful to her. I've also been faithful to our Catholic Church my entire life. Your mother has been my faithful companion and lover through it all. I'm so grateful that God gave us one another and I'm grateful that he gave the two of us all of you. But I want you to be able to say the same thing when your final days come, that you have been faithful to your spouses and to God and to his church. I want you to leave behind a legacy of goodness, which I hope is what I have done. We were all in tears. I was deeply touched and I'll never forget that experience. He died several days later, <clears throat> but I noted something at his after his funeral, which I realized I had experienced before and I have experienced since, but up until that time, I really didn't have words for it. <clears throat> As we were walking out of the church and into the hall for the luncheon, there was probably not one person who knew this man well, including his grieving wife and children and pastor, who at a deeper level than sadness, the sadness that we had at the moment, did not feel freer, less guilty, more open to life than ever before. He had said that he wanted to do his death right, and I believe he did. But that reinforced everything good he had ever done in his life, so that it, what he wanted to give us came to us. And the goodness of his life, he showed even more deeply in his death. I think it is good for us to reflect upon our life as we are living it, and our death as we anticipate it. But not with any kind of morbid sense of dread. We believe that we're going to heaven but rather an understanding that this is one more task we will all face as human beings. And there are ways of doing it well or doing it poorly. And either way, we can leave a legacy behind. How we live and how we die leaves behind a certain spirit, which is either a blessing spirit or a cursing spirit. And this is what we leave behind after we're gone the final human and Christian challenge of our lives is the struggle to give our deaths away. So the church's advice is always valuable. Memento mori, remember that you will die. And as that young saint I spoke about on All Saints Day, blessed Carlo Acutis reminded us, the infinite is our homeland. Heaven has been waiting for us forever, amen.